Slog at PV. For Christmas, I have Santa for an iFlight DC-3 with a DJI Air Unit. So why did I ask Santa for the DC-3 over the DC-5? Well, I was looking for a dead cat design, uh, didn't want ducks. That's a three inch that could carry a DJI Air Unit. Uh, that fits my you know, freestyle park flying uh, needs. Uh, I need something that's smaller and quieter so it doesn't draw attention. Uh, since there are a lot of positive reviews on this, I decided, well, this would probably be something I would uh, like to have. So I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on the specs, but I'll go over them quickly. So the frame, again, is the dead cat design, so you don't get props in your view. Uh, the flight stack is the Sussex uh, Mini F7 with uh, 35 amp ESCs. I think it bursts up to 40 amps. Um, of course, it is uh, wired for the DJI Air unit. Uh, mine came with an XM Plus receiver. Um, you can get it with a Crossfire version or without a receiver and just use your DJI remote controller if you have one. Um, it is equipped with the Zing 1404 motors here. Uh, I think they're 4600 kV. Yes, uh, that's what they are. And uh, they recommend a battery uh, from 4S 650 ma to 850 ma. Um, I'm going to be using uh, three different batteries to try out. Uh, first, I'm going to be trying the 650 4S Tattoo batteries. Um, I was going to try an 850 Ma 3S, you know, just something that would be sometimes for light cruising. Uh, so uh, I was going to try that. And then lastly, uh, I'm going to try these, let me get that into the view, 520 Ma uh, 4S battery. So next, uh, let's get a weight on this. So I'm measuring 171 grams with... Uh, 650 ma 4s battery we're coming in at 239 so we're below the 250 gram mark uh, with uh, 850 ma 3s battery we're coming in at 247 grams so still under 250 for those who are interested in being uh, lower than 250 grams and with this 525 or 520 ma battery, that's a 4S, we're at 227 grams. So the things that I did uh, modify from stock, um, I did um, add longer antenna tubes here. The ones that it came with were a little short. So I had some um, that uh, I use on my builds. So I went ahead and made them a little longer. Um, I did put a uh, Uma Grip battery pad on here, the thin version of that. And then I went ahead and um, added some landing pads here. You can kind of see those that I cut down. And then um, what I did also changed, I looked at in the Betaflight configurator and it looked like it was intended to be used with RPM filtering on but I did not uh, have the latest version of BL Heli 32 um, that would enable um, RPM filtering. Uh, so I did upgrade from 4.1.0 to 4.1.2 Betaflight, and then I updated the ESCs and enabled the RPM filtering. Um, I am running 4K 4K on the PID loop um, frequency uh, with the D-Shot 300. That's kind of the default recommendation. Um, I think you, since this is an F7 processor, you might be able to get away with AKAK and DSHOT 600, but uh, when I looked at the peak processor utilization, it was a little high, even though this is an F7, so I decided to go ahead and just uh, stick with 4K, 4K and DSHOT 300. Um, I did fire this thing up in angle mode in my house, and I'm very pleased to report it is very quiet for a 3 inch, which is good news, so that's what I wanted. Uh, so next, I'm going to go ahead and take it out for its maiden and then give you my first impressions of this. You know, hopefully this is going to be one of my standard uh, park flyers where, um, you know, I want to have the DJI uh, video quality. And so hopefully this will work out for me.
So before I get into my first impressions of the DC3, uh, I wanted to go over a few things that I changed from the factory defaults. The first being is I did end up enabling uh, RPM filtering. But in order to do that, you need to know how many pulls are on the motor. So you can either count the number of magnets on the bell, or you can go to iFlight's uh, web page here, and I'll link it below. And you'll see the configuration here, and it says 9N12P, which stands for nine stator arms with 12 poles or 12 magnets. So we're gonna plug this number into Betaflight. Okay, underneath the configuration tab, if we go there, uh, this was blank when I uh, received the DC-3. It was pretty interesting, the bi-directional D-shot was turned on, but there was nothing set in the 12, uh, the number of motor poles was not set up correctly. So this is where you'll put in the number of magnets or poles. And again, you can either count those or you can just look it up, um, what the motor configuration is. So that's one thing that I had to change. But what was really interesting, if you go to the, um, the other thing I did, uh, you know, I talked about, I started out running it at D-Shot 300. Or 300. Uh, I was still getting what I thought was a little excessive prop wash, so I went uh, back to D-Shot 600 and then 8K, 8K, since this is an F7 processor. Um, I did um, look at the processor loading here. If you put in tasks here, you'll see that yes um, on the gyro pid uh, task here it's real close to 8k and i'm at 82 percent max load so um, that is fine and the reason why i did that because um, i wanted to see if that would correct the prop wash that i was getting and it did help quite a bit i mean it didn't eliminate all the prop wash you know it's hard to totally eliminate all the prop wash especially on really um, you know u-turns uh, that, that you're really trying to force it into a condition where you know it's it's getting in it into its own um, dirty air uh, but I significantly reduced it by going to 8k 8k so we'll go back to that right now um, So as far as everything else on the configuration page, it looked like it was set up correctly. Uh, moving down here, they had the arming angle set to 180. Uh, the S bus and serial bus receiver was uh, set up correctly. Um, they did have anti-gravity and dynamic filter. So everything looked to be correct. Um, they had RX lost and RX set turned on. And uh, so everything else on the configuration page looked fine. Uh, moving on to the power and battery, I left that alone um, to the defaults that they had. Um, moving to the PID tuning tab, um, you know, this is uh, what I ended up with as far as my PID settings. Um, I tried to use these sliders. Um, I just turned up the P and D gain a little bit. Um, I did turn on VBAT PID compensation but uh, that's all I changed there. And again, of course, we already talked about what was changed on the um, profile independent filter settings um, with um, the gyro RPM filter being set to 100 that they already had it set. They had uh, the dynamic notch filter range to low, dynamic notch Q 200 and uh, dynamic uh, notch min set to 90. Um, uh, they did leave the gyro um, RPM filter harmonic number set to three. So I didn't change anything. Um, also, um, they had the sliders here at 1.3 and 1.3. Uh, moving on to the receiver, I use uh, mapping of AET R1234. Um, as far as my aux, channel, aux channels, so I left that alone. Um, if you look at um, what I did as far as my modes, um, this is my just my typical setup with aux one being my arm um, aux 2 being the uh, my mode switch to switch between angle horizon and air mode or acro. So um, I also use aux 4 as a, using the D-shot commands uh, for a beacon, using a D-shot beacon. Um, it actually is, uh, I think, loud enough to where if you were close enough you could hear it. Uh, I might later on put a buzzer on it. Uh, then, of course, Ox4, I have it set up for a flip over on crash. 
Um, I do have a rate switch here and uh, I set that up. And other than that, as far as going into the OSD, it's nice now that uh, the latest version of firmware for the goggles and the air unit now supports telemetry information. So that's nice. So I turned on some things there. But uh, that is basically all I did as far as changes from the factory defaults. So underneath the BL Heli Suite 32, the only changes I made, of course, were to um, load the right version of BL Heli 32, which is uh, 32.7 is the firmware version you need on it. Um, I set the motor timing to auto and the PWM frequency uh, to 48 kilohertz. So other than that, uh, that's the only changes I made. Um, I left the DMAG compensation just set to low um, cause I, and I didn't have any problems with uh, um, desync, so I just left that alone. So here are my first impressions of the DC-3 with the limited amount of flight time I had on it due to inclement weather where I live. Uh, first, I need to level set your expectation. This is foremost a cine drone. Uh, iFlight is up front with this as it shows up in their uh, Cine Drone product line list on their website. So with that in mind, let's go through what it's not. It's not a fast drone. My three inch toothpicks are way faster and more nimble. Also, it's not the lightest three inch out there, which is due to the added weight of the air unit. Um, lastly, it's not the best three inch freestyle drone out, out there, but it is adequate. So what it is, it's a great little Cine Drone that takes ultra smooth video. Um, it does fly better than most cine whoops as it doesn't have the ducks and it doesn't suffer from any yaw washout. Um, I think it's a blast to fly just cruising around. I love exploring with my DJI goggles on and the dead cat design keeps the props out of view. So it's a great little um, cruiser for just exploring and, and just flying around having fun. Um, it, it can do like uh, park freestyle and also I've seen other pilots on YouTube that are much better than myself doing technical freestyle tricks with the DC-3 so yes it can do freestyle it's just not the best out there um, lastly it does have really good flight times I was getting over five minutes with the um, 850 3S um, battery that I was running um, which I think is a good little battery if you're just wanting to go around exploring. Um, for freestyle, I think the uh, 650 Ma 4S battery is a, is a sweet spot. So as far as the build itself, I think the build quality on this thing is outstanding. iFlight does a good job with quality control. Also, it does fly great out of the box except for some prop wash, which can be reduced by enabling the RPM filtering that I showed you. Uh, also, the components in here are top-notch. Um, iFlight and the stack here with an F7 processor, um, it is an excellent um, as far as the electronic components and motors on this thing. Uh, so the cons, um, again, it's not the fastest quad on the block, but that's to be expected as, because it's a cine drone. Uh, the camera protection is not good. So I would recommend either buying an aftermarket uh, cover for your um, air unit camera, or you can just print one out. Um, there's a lot of them out there that you can print on Thingiverse. I'll link the one that I printed out here. Uh, the antenna two placement in my mind is uh, uh, not the best as it interferes with laying down the battery flat. And then also the antenna tubes are short. So I'm probably gonna move the um, receiver antennas down here onto the arms uh, because you know I would rather uh, lay the uh, batteries flat on the deck. Uh, it did not come with landing pads so I had to add those. Um, so those are only a couple niggles uh, you know that are minor but um, I do think this is a good cine drone. In fact, I think what you're looking at is uh, what our future looks like. Um, the FAA uh, remote ID proposal that's in play right now, um, you know, anything under 250 grams, you're not gonna have to 
hopefully have remote ID. So that pretty much limits uh, us to three inch quads that uh, weigh less than 250 grams if it actually comes to fruition on what the FAA proposal is out there. So I would request that all um, us US pilots, uh, we need to have our voice heard. You, we need to make comments on there. Um, and to FAA, I'll go ahead. I think uh, uh, 51 Drones has a pretty good overview of what the proposal is. And I think we all need to get involved in this because it definitely, as proposed, is gonna put quite a bit of limitation on what we can fly and where we can fly. And anything uh, greater than 250 grams, um, you're gonna be either um, relegated to flying in an AMA park or, um, you know, sanctioned races. I, I probably will get waivers, but um, yeah, really need to get involved and FAA needs to hear, you know, all our voices on that because it is just a proposal and they will be reviewing our comments. So uh, please uh, get involved in this. Uh, so overall, um, I really like this quad and I uh, highly recommend it. Thanks for watching my channel.